Let's look at the Pedro Sauer elbow escape. It's it's an elbow escape as we know the elbow escape. But let me give you guys this angle here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this angle. Okay. I'm gonna hold on to my opponents. I'm gonna be totally sideways right now. I'm gonna hold on to my opponent's torso essentially. This hand, you know, we're used to putting at the hip. By the way, don't just put your wrist at his hip. Like try to put your elbow at the hip because then it's supported through the humerus uh, to the floor, right? It's much harder to push that down uh, than this. This is easy to push down, right? So we put this in the in the hip bone. So I'm here, and then this one under their body across our stomachs, and I'm holding under the armpit. I don't need it out where he can play with it. I'm here, okay? So then this is you can my invisible partner's body. All right. Now the movements always start like this. I'm gonna start with the leg. That's I'm gonna flatten this leg so you can see. The movements always start with. Oh. With the outside leg, the leg, he's here. So I'm going to move the leg further from him. And I start walking that foot out, and then I put these toes on the ground, and I help. This moves my lower body away from the person. Helps me get on my side. In fact, one way I like to think about this is uh, I'm here, and it's this. I walk this out. Now look at, think about just my hip bones, like the hip bones in front that you can knock. Instead of pole vaulting this one over this one, it's a different approach. This Pedro Sauerwey is sucking this one underneath this one. So instead of this, you know, when we do this with our feet, see how I'm sucking the, the one on my right under the one on my left? That's why it's so much more effective against somebody. And for those of you that know the self-defense, you know the move when we're against a wall. You picture me against the wall and I, someone's pinning me, and I hold their arms, and I slide out from the wall. That's exactly what we're doing here. I don't turn off the wall when someone's pinning me to the wall. And it's not going to work on the ground either, okay? So I just made this connection the other night, so I wanted to point it out. But again, um, here, I walk my feet out and bring this hip along the ground. Then even with weight on me, I can do it. And when I put this foot back, it prevents someone from re-flattening me. But it, I, my positioning can be even better. That's lower body. And now it's time for my upper body. I'm going to put my hand on their hip, and I'm going to do, do this. I'm going to push off so that essentially my hands switch which is longer, Pedro Sauer says, right? So after I move my legs away, and I drag this hip under the other hip, I'm gonna place my hand on the hip and switch my shoulders so that my top arm is longer. That means my chest is facing the ground more than my back, right? And from here, I'm gonna do this movement here. I put this knee in, uh, their knees are posted here on the ground. I come into the space beside the hip, not under the knee, but right next to the hip. And I put this down at an angle. I'll give you guys a couple angles of this. And now, my knees between their knees. Now I step over and I catch their foot, put my foot on the ground, and my, I'm holding onto their leg essentially here now. And by crowbarring their femur, you know, their, their other leg comes into the air and I can just push it and catch them now fully in closed guard. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple angles on this. Let's go back to this angle here. From here and here, I'm gonna walk this far foot out. And this, drag my hip along the ground under the other one. Put my hand on the hip, switch my shoulders, put this knee in at this angle here. It's now between their knees, which are here and here. My knee is between their knees. My foot essentially hooking their hip, but not to hold it, which is just where it is. Now I'm going to step over my foot and their foot and put my foot on the ground. Put this foot on the ground, and you can see that when I do this with their leg in between, I'm going to crowbar them up like this. Now I'll push this leg and catch them in closed guard. All right. So having described it last night a bunch of times and tonight for a few minutes here, let's just do a few, okay? Start on your back, elbow on the hip, outside foot, inside foot, lower body, upper body, insert, step over everything, both feet on the ground, crowbar, push their leg and catch them in full closed guard. Okay, again, walk the outside foot out, inside foot, find your toes, Push off, fix your lower body, make a kick stand, block their hip, switch your shoulders. Oh, yeah, this one's long, right? Okay. Leg goes in, step over everything, toes to the ground, hold their leg, crowbar, push their other leg, and do this. You'll find their other leg is very light. Okay, let's do three more. Walk my foot out, three more on the side. Walk the other foot out, fix your hips, fix your shoulders. Insert, step over everything, all your toes on the ground, crowbar, and push and catch. Crowbar, push and catch at the end there. And start here. Walk my foot out. 
Two leg like two, fix my hips. Push off the hip and switch my shoulders. Get a little bit more distance, put that knee in, step over everything. All my feet on the ground, ground. crowbar, push and capture. Outside foot, inside foot. Shoulders, insert, step, crowbar, push, capture. Okay. Last one, I might have miscounted, but last one. Outside foot, inside foot. Fix your hips, fix your upper body, insert the knee, step over everything. All toes on the ground, crowbar, push and capture, okay? Let's do, you know, we just did, you know, a few with instruction and then like maybe five on that side. Let's just do five on this side. So I'm gonna walk my foot out. This is gonna be wonky maybe on one side. So I fix my lower body. And now um, having my arm underneath in this case, Hand to the hip, and I'm gonna fix my shoulders, insert my knee, step over everything, all my toes on the ground now. Crowbar sliding my hips underneath, push and capture. All right, that's one. Step out. You can stay on your good side if you wanna just get more reps on your good side. If you have a good side, fix your shoulders, insert the knee. Step over everything, all your toes on the ground. Crowbar, push and catch. That's two, outside foot, inside foot. Fix your hips. Right now, sorry, I should have my hand on the bar. Now I'm gonna hand on the hip. I'm gonna get a little distance here. Insert, step over everything. Toes on the ground. Shove my hips underneath them while I sort of crowbar them up. So I'm here. Step out, step out. Hand to the hip. Fix your shoulders. Insert this knee. Step over everything. All your toes on the ground. You can't just crowbar with your butt back there. You have to bring your butt in the crowbar, right? Push the leg with your left hand now and capture the body. Last two, outside foot, inside foot. And then turning on your side. Sorry, this should be. This should be on the far side. Hand on the hip, fix your shoulders, put your knee in, step over everything, toes to the floor. Lock the hip with your elbow. Far side arm is under the armpit. Now walk your foot out, onto your toes, fix your hip, uh, hips, hand on the body, create that distance, step. In, puts in the air because it's at their hip. Step over everything. All your toes on the ground. Step in, push their leg and capture. Last one on this side. Take your foot out. This foot. Sorry, it should be hand in the hip, in the far armpit. Legs, lock their hip. Fix my upper body. Insert this leg. Step over everything. Toes on the ground. Sort of shovel underneath that. Push and catch. Okay. Good. So those are those are the elbow escapes. Um, let's look at the belly down escape. So what these escapes have in common is that when you're on the ground, um, when you're on the ground, you're gonna have uh, if they're you, and this is my far arm, like their body's over here and their head's over here. I'm blocking the hip and I'm under here. Uh, all these have in common that the arm, the arm that they could play with and break most easily, the one that's kind of in front of them, is under the far armpit, okay? And uh, I took it for granted in the beginning, so let me just mention it. It's very conscious that we're doing this configuration, not this one, and not, you know, any, any other one, any other place you could put your hand, okay? We're intentionally putting the arm under the armpit, and uh, the reason is, you know, Pedro Sauer and all his top guys, um, have always done moves this way and said it was the best place to put their arms. And uh, as I think back, uh, I know Hoist and Horian always did, uh, and the only classes that I saw Elio teach, he always did. Um, so arm under the far armpit, I think is like the one we're gonna wanna look for, all right? I think that a lot of people started doing this because it's a bracing. I know, I was thinking about this today, because it's like bracing, you know, I can brace them here but I can also maybe fend off shoulder pressure. So shoulder pressure became very popular, you know, back 
10 years ago or something like that, people started talking a lot about the shoulder of justice. Like we've always kind of like done it, but it became like a thing that everybody talks about then. And when everybody got real into it, you wanted sort of two hands, you felt like you wanted two hands here to defend. We can talk about how to defend that, even though your arm's on the, uh, depending where your arm is. But uh, for now, let's say far armpit is what we want all the time, okay, at PMA. All right. So the belly down escape is going to be this here. Bring this up a little Okay. Hands are in the same place. Okay. Belly down escape starts the same way too. Walk my outside foot out. Get on my side. Okay. So far so good. Now, I'm going to step out a little more. So I'm a little more north-south to you if you're them, right? I'm going to get on my side to face you. Okay. From here, I'm going to take one more step and go a little more north-south. I'm going to put this hand, which was just under the armpit, on the thigh. So the, the ground's going to be my thigh for now. So I'm here. I just stepped out. Put my hand on the thigh, stepped out a little more. And then this foot is going to thread the needle, like come underneath here, so that I'm facing the person. This hand is on the thigh. This elbow is planted, and my hand is ready with this grip here. Because anybody above me is going to try to wrap my head, and I'm going to try to catch that wrist. This wrist, when it comes in, the attacker's wrist. When they go for the guillotine, I'm going to catch their wrist, okay? From here, I'm going to center my knee, step up on the inside leg, step up on the outside leg. And now I can maybe maybe capture their knee and tip them all the way to side mount. But either way, if they don't fall over, I can shed the, the arm there and take their back. Let's do it again. You'll be maybe taking my word for it if you can't picture it, but just do what I do. All right. So we're here. We're going to walk out this foot. We're going to turn on our side. We're going to walk out this foot. Now, one more step at the outside foot, and then I'm going to thread the needle. And this hand's going to go to the floor. That's their thigh. I'm going to come up to my elbow, and I'm here ready to catch their arm. They're attacking me. Step up the inside knee. Step up the outside knee. You already have the wrist on this arm, and my head is basically in the armpit, and I'm going to try to knock them over here. Maybe you get side mount. Maybe you get the back. There's even some other stuff we can do there. Uh, I'm going to change my angle one time. So you can see maybe what I do with my foot there. So I'm here, the threading the, threading the needle part. Okay. So I'm here, I'm gonna walk this out, get on my side. Okay. And then I take one more step. And then this leg is going under the first leg. This hand goes to their thigh. I'm on the ground. And I want, I actually want my toes on the ground. I don't have them right here. So I want to be here. And this arm is ready to catch the arm that comes in. And then I'm gonna step up the inside leg for base, step up the outside leg. This is now my progression and I'm gonna Try to shed them off that way. All right. So let's do let's do three on this side, right? And I'm just I'm just gonna go through them. So I'm here. Sorry, this is my habit actually. So we're gonna go here. Walk, go back, turn, take another step, put this hand on their thigh, the other leg goes great. I'm making sure I look elbows on the floor, you're ready to catch their hand. Step up the inside hand, drive forward and turn the corner. Step out the outside leg. Get on your side, right? Take one more step and then thread the needle. And now I'm like north south of them. I'm even with them. This hand is on their thigh, their leg. Here, my elbow's on the ground. I'm ready to catch. If I'm down, I'm just going to be that attacking arm. I'm going to catch the wrist. Step up the inside leg, step up the outside leg, cut the corner. Okay. And we're either going to get behind them or knock them over. Two more. Outside leg. Turn my hips. Turn my hips. Thread the needle, get up to here. This is, you're gonna need this hand for defense, and don't forget that part. Inside knee, outside knee. And we're shedding, we're knocking them over. Last one on the side, I'm here, off my legs. One more, thread the needle, get up to here. This hand won't be on the ground in real life, it's gonna be like on their thigh. Over here, step up, step up. I'm turning the corner here. That's the belly down. Okay, that's the belly down escape. Um, any of this is worth reviewing. Um, so go back and check out the, uh, especially on my good side, check out the instruction. On that. Okay, so one more. I'm gonna do two more where I start with this initial setup when my arm is underneath the far side. This one's like a sneaky catch, uh, sneaky move. And it's when I start turning on my side, sometimes people dig for this space right here. And what they want is they want to get behind my arm and catch me in a head and arm choke right here. If they get, if I am, well, it's not gonna be a good way to demonstrate without turning my back to you. So 
basically, when I open this space, there's a chance I get caught in the head and arm choke when they put this arm in their south arm. So when they do, if they do, or if you want to bait it and they do, I don't, rec I don't recommend, you know, walking into trouble, but this became one of my good escapes, so admittedly I do. I've hipped out, I open this space, and they start to reach in, and their hand is coming through, and they're going to, you know, hands first, they're going to wrap around my neck. But when their hand gets to about mid-chest, I catch it, catch their arm, and trap their elbow. I'm trying to catch over their elbow. Now I'm going to block either their hip or their leg. Let's do hip first. If I block the hip, I want a stiff arm, and I want to shovel under them with my hips. So this is what I mean by shovel. I'm holding their arm, their south arm, so they don't have one. And when I do this, boop, I put them on the other side, and I actually, it's a reversal, I end up on top. So let's do that again. I start here, I turn on my side, I open this space, and I catch their arm. Once you catch their wrist and catch their elbow, you block the hip, and now walk your hips right into them. You're going to shovel your hips. My hips are going to go like this. They start facing this way, and then they tilt, blocking the hip, tilt toward the ceiling. And when I get to the other side, and this is when I'm able to get up on top. Okay, this was a couple, this was a few times. Uh, and here, I don't just turn on my side because we can't. There's weight on us, but this is walking out here. Open, now catch, catch the hand, catch the elbow, block the hip, shovel your hips underneath. So that's I'm walking with my feet. And by the time I get to here, I'm there, they've fallen their hips across my hips, and I am on top. Last one. Okay, I'm here. Now, opens up, catch the hand, catch the elbow. I might have to go get the elbow. Block the hip, stiff arm, right? And now walk in. See, this is their hips coming over my hips, and now I'm on top. Okay, let's do that version. I think that's a good version to do. And let's just do a couple on my wonky side. Let's do a couple on the other side. Okay. So blocking the, my hip, elbow near them is blocking the hip. Other one's in the far armpit. Move your leg away so you're on your side. And oops, you know, I open the space. They open that space or I baited it by opening it. So they put their hand, I catch their hand and I catch their elbow. Okay. And now I walk my feet toward them, shovel my hips underneath them. Oop, and I end up on top. This was my arm, stiff arm and their hip. Okay. And that's their hip going across my hips and me reversing them and ending up on top. I'll get up to show the get up. So I'm here and here, walk my leg out. Somebody reaches in this space, I'm gonna grab their hand, grab their elbow, stiff arm their hip, walk my hips toward them underneath. And this, this sun rising and setting over here is their hips going across my hips. And then at that point, I will get on top. Um, and you're in a nice top side. Let's do one more on that side just to do it. Oop, here and here, walk your leg out, open that space, catch their hand and elbow, stiff arm their hip, walk in, walk in with your legs. This will put you right on top. Okay. And then the last escape that we're going to do with this arm in the far armpit is the ratchet escape. And then we're just going to talk about uh, what happens when you land in ratchet escape, which is uh, the quote unquote dogfight position. I think, that, I think I heard that name in the last only five years because it's from like 10th planet. Okay. But here we go. I'm here. Now, I can use the arm that's under the armpit. This is the big advantage of me having the arm under the armpit. I can use it to sort of like come out the back door. And I'll do that movement in a moment. But first, I just want to talk about how people are going to shut that down. Maybe you can see that this is my scout. This is my initial, the, the, the troop who scouts out their armpit. But I'm going to try to get the rest of me out from underneath their arm as well. So if anybody wants to stop me from doing that, they're going to do this. They're going to uh, put their weight down on my wrist and bring it down to my hips. So instead of being over my chest, they're going to go over my stomach. And now look, you know, it's like harder to get them off me down here, even if I use my hip, which is what we will do. So their body, which is encapsulated by my hands, moves down. And now they're at the end of the lever. This being my lever, I lost all the leverage. Right? Okay. So I'm going to do this. If somebody brings my arm down to here, okay, my arm stays on my inner thigh because my knee, I want my knee as high up their body under their armpit as possible. And I'm going to nudge them from down here back up here. And now I can straighten my arm and do my ratchet escape. Okay. So I'm only going to mention that here in the beginning, but we're going to do it every time. They're on my chest. They go down on my stomach, but I nudge them back up with my leg. And now straight arm, 
I lift with my hips. My hips come up. My hips are under my elbow. It doesn't look like that was actually resting on my ribs technically. But when I lift my hips, my arm goes up. That's one, and that's going to get them off me. And you might add, you might add a little thud on the floor, right? So boom, that'll get their weight off you for a second. And then we're going to do this. I'm going to sort of pull with my feet and look over my shoulder and come out the back door. Okay. So let me come up to here so I have room to do it. They're up here. They go down here. I nudge them back. My knee is on the outside. My knee is on the outside. Nudge them up so they're high again. Now here, I go one for the, to get their weight off me, one for the mic. And the second one is the one where I almost like pulled myself with my feet. Now sometimes someone's gonna be smaller than you and you're gonna go boom and they're just gonna go flying because they're small. And uh, you know, I can do that to the kids, you know, for example. But I can't do it to Matt or Justin or any of our bigger guys, Brian. Josh. So instead, that second one, I'm probably looking to use my arm against them to move myself. You know, so even if my arm stayed where it was, I moved myself. And what happens is I pull with my feet, and I end up here looking over my shoulder. From here, I'm going to switch my legs and get up, and I'm going to be holding their waist. So I'm right beside them. I get like a tight waist grip here uh, around the waist. And this, and I'm actually straddling their, excuse me actually straddling their their legs they're they're here and I, my legs are you know straddling one of their legs when i get up so again whole thing let's do it together they're up here they move down nudge one two look over your shoulder switch your legs and get up and you're holding the waist okay let's do a few of them they're up here they move down here and nudge them back and now one two I look, you know, I'm trying to look, it's like I'm trying to look at the bottom of my own chin. My head starts here. I want to see the bottom of my chin. So I come down here, hoping it'll still be there, right? Now switch your legs and get up, and you'll be straddling their, one of their legs. They're here. Their legs are here and here next to mine. And I'm holding their waist, and I don't lift my head up just yet. Just keep your head, your ear against their ribs for right now. Let's do a few. Up here, and down. I nudge them back, knees on the outside. Now straighten my arm. One, two, wrap the waist, switch your legs, and get up. Go right here, just slide down. I nudge them. Okay, now here's the ratchet escape. One, two, now switch your legs, hold their waist, and get up to dog fight position. Last one, go right here, go down. I nudge them up, bump, and Bump again, try and see my underneath my own chin, right? Switch your legs and get up, hold their waist, and now I'm in dog fight position. So dog fight position in which one guy is here, and the other guy is literally here straddling his two legs and with my hand over his waist and my ear against his ribs. That's where we're gonna take the next move. Okay. First we're gonna talk about the maybe best way to handle this as soon as you land which is this. When I'm here, I need this space over here. So when I'm here, I'm going to reach across underneath. I can actually see under him. That's why I don't pick my head up. I can't see under him anymore. So when I'm here, my ears against his ribs, I can actually see in the space. He's on his knees and his elbows maybe, but I can see his far knee. I'm going to reach for his far knee and drive in. So knock him over. Okay. We talk about like avoiding the legs, but it's too much to imagine right now. So we're going to just do this. We're just going to talk about that's the takedown, very simple takedown. I just got up to here. I'm holding my guy right here. I reach across underneath for his knee, find it, and I drive in. The way I would really get on top is kick this leg over his per perhaps like last ditch hook effort. Okay. I'm here. His legs are here and here. My hands around his waist, my ears on his ribs. I'm reach under for that far knee, drive in, and again, this trailing leg, that's the one he could hook with this leg. So I kind of pick it up so it's hard to do, and I almost almost back step, and then I come around and I'm on the top of the side now. So from dog fight, here's their legs. I'm straddling one leg. My hands are on the waist, my ears on the ribs. Right? I reach underneath, grab, they call it a knee tap, or grab his knee. Drive in now. I just I'm just pushing up this leg. Drive in, knock him over. I almost back step out because I'm trying not to get hooked with the lingering foot. Let's do that one more time and then put it together. So 
We're here. We're way skier against the ribs. Reach under, grab the knee, drive in, back step, and you're in, you'll be inside. Now. Okay. Let's put together. Let's put that together for three. Let's just do three reps where we put it together. So here he scoots down to take away my leverage. So I scoot him up. Bump. I get up. I'm just gonna turn so you can see. I get up. Look underneath. Find his knee. Drive in. Back step out from a hook, and I should be good. Let's see. How do I end up there? Like this, I guess, right? Yeah. My camera? Yeah. So I'm going to be here and here. Uh, he comes down my body. I nudge him back up. And now one, two. And then I'm going to switch my legs and come up. Now next to him here. Next to him here. His legs are here. Reach underneath for his knee. Drive in. Back step over his hook. And I'm there. Last one. He moves down. I nudge him back up. Now one, two. I'm going to get up, tip his knee, back step out, and take side knot. Okay. So that's your number one from dog fight. You see his knee, you can tip his knee, go. So I, that's, this is why I don't get here and immediately come up. You know, I try to stay here so I can see what's going on underneath. Okay. But uh, sometimes you won't be able to reach his knee. Sometimes here's me straddling his legs, so now I'm going to be his legs. One of my legs is straddled back here. If my knees are far apart when I'm down, it may be hard for the person who's like essentially here to reach my knee. Maybe you won't be able to like kind of reach far enough to get that knee, but there is a foot back here you can reach. So I'm trying to take imagining. Put it in the mixer for us. So I'm here. If I can't reach the knee because he's got really wide base and I can't reach that one, I'm gonna do this. My hip side hand. He's gonna go to his foot back here. That's where his foot is. He's here, and look, here's my foot. So the hand that was holding my waist is gonna go down to the foot and pull it in like this. Now this hand will be able to reach it, and that's the move we're doing here. So I'm here. I can't reach the knee because they're here. Can't reach the knee. So I find the foot. I reach between the legs and I hand it to my hand, and then I hold his hip again. Okay. So one more time. Uh, his knees are his knees are wide. So I'm holding his waist, but I can't reach his knee. So instead, I'm going to grab his foot back here, hand it forward to this hand, which is palm up. Now go back. Go back to your job of holding the waist. But now that his leg looks like this, we're not going to knock him sideways anymore. We're going to knock him backwards this way. So the whole thing is just take his foot, pass it up, grab his waist, and pull him backwards. You notice I did not drive sideways anymore. This way. I went straight back. So it's just a little handy work, just a little hand work. I'm gonna be here. Can't reach, so I get the foot, pass it, get back to his waist, and drive him backwards, tip him backwards. So here, can't reach, so I reach back to that foot. This is behind him, passing it in front. I'm reaching between his legs and holding the foot, holding his waist again, tipping him backwards. So here, get the foot, pass, waist, and backwards. And here, that was maybe a little fast. Grab his, I can't reach his knee, so with this hand I grab his foot, pass it forward through his leg so it looks like this, and then this hand grabs it, palm up, hold his waist again, chip him backwards. That's that's this right here, holding the waist, and chipping the guy backwards. Last one. So here, I can't reach his knee, I'm gonna grab his foot, pass it forward, hold it here, hold his waist, chip him backwards, okay? And I'm already inside now. Okay, no more positional stuff to know. All right, so that's if you can't reach his knee. Um, but there's another thing that, that's going to happen frequently when you do this to somebody with any wrestling experience or a lot of guys with some jiu-jitsu experience uh, or judo and have some moves here might do a wizard. And a wizard is going to be wizards anytime my arms around their back like this. So now, now I'm the other guy and someone's behind me here and their hands around my waist and here's their body. And I overhook their arm. So I'm putting my hand between our bodies and I'm overhooking that arm that's going back here and holding my waist. Over like that. Okay. So why do they wizard? A wizard, if I overhook the arm, maybe I can make the guy hit his head off the ground. Okay. I was here. Somebody wizards my arm, they start pushing my shoulder down. Maybe they can like get my head off the ground, you know, if you're in a fight or something. Um, or just somebody's like trying to like 
So it's, it almost feels like a hip throw. It almost feels like a hip throw action, basically. So, so I'm here. Somebody wizards me, right? They reach over between our bodies and they wizard me. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to give you two things to do when, when you see the wizard. One. So I got up, I held the waist, and then boom, they swung the arm over. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to go loose in my arm, and I'm going to do a motion that you'll only see probably half of which is an air guitar move, right? I'm doing this. So I'm limp arming, doing an air guitar type movement. And when my arm lands, it'll be out from the wizard and over their back again. And now I can come on top and put a harness in. So it's a very simple movement. It's a good problem, a good solution to a common problem, which is the wizard. So I just got up and I held their waist and they overhooked my arm and I feel this. Well, I'm going to limp arm, look away, and draw a big circle here. And now I'm back to their waist. This unentangles it. Now I'm on their waist, but now I can put on a harness. Okay. So I just got up to here. Just look away, and then air guitar. Let that arm go loose. Hopefully, you don't hit the ceiling fan. Or anything. Boom. And then harness. You're going to come right over the near side now. And then we can, you know, we can do stuff from here and maybe take the back. We won't today. So today we're going to do this. I just got out of the ratchet and I'm coming up and I hold this waist and then he wizards me. I'm going to do this. Look away. Look away. Boom. Air guitar. Put your eyes in. Okay. Super simple. Super simple. Common uh, problem. Simple solution. That's the best stuff. Okay. There's another thing I can do here. When somebody does a wizard and comes between our two bodies, so I'm here, somebody's behind, behind me a little bit, stepping, uh, straddling my lower leg, and I wizard their arm so that I can like throw them down. The only problem is now my arm is stuck between two bodies, right? I got the arm, but I'm putting my arm someplace. It's not as helpful to me to like base with here. It's between our bodies. So when I'm this guy and I just got wizard, the arm is like between our bodies. So I actually have like, between me and him, I have a clamp on. I mean, he's got a good leverage over me. He's got more leverage this direction. But he can't he can't base out where my body is, so I'm going to keep my body close to his body. I'm going to do this. I'm going to roll under. And this time I'm not tapping his knee to drive him. This time I'm blocking his knee, right? Blocking his knee. And I put my knee against his knee, my far knee, this knee against his knee. And you should be able to roll him over, and you'll end up on top of him. So... Uh, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm this guy. Here's this guy, Wizard Man. Here's Wizard Man. But I'm this guy, right? Okay. So instead of just getting pushed down to the floor, which is what they're doing, I'm gonna block their far knee and bring my knee against their knee and roll them. I roll underneath, and you'll end up on top. Okay. I'm a good guy. I'm getting wizard. I'm gonna dive under. Bring my knee and bring my hand in. Boom. I'll roll nice and easily. This hand is like on that knee. It keeps control over their hips through the leg until I can roll them over and get on top. This is an answer to a wizard. So we have two answers. One answer was, oh, I got wizard. What do you say? Air guitar. Oh, yeah. Boom. And then put a harness in. Okay, that's one thing. The other is, I'm getting wizard. The guy has no base on this side because I'm in the way of his arm. So I'm going to do this. Block his leg. Roll him over my body and to the other side. So let's do like two more of those. I'm here. So. Um, wizards, which you're going to feel this. You're going to feel your shoulder get pushed down. So that's when, okay, if you want me down, I'm going to go down, but we're going to roll. Boom. Go to the top. Last one. I'm here. I feel the wizard. I dive in. And I roll the guy over. We're going with his energy. You know, this is very jujitsu. Okay. So. We talked about, these are all the things we talked about from dogfight. I ratchet escaped, and then I got up and I held the waist. Plan A, knee, knee tip, right? Touch his knee, drive in, back step out of that annoying hook. Okay, that's one. Uh, second one we did was, if I can't reach his knee, I'm gonna grab his foot, pass it forward, hold this, and now I don't drive that way, I tip him backwards. And then we talked about two wizard answers. One was air guitar, and one was 
We'll come in and roll. Okay. So that's all the dogfight stuff. I thought I would throw in, uh, as long as we have a couple minutes, I thought I would throw in one last thing, which is this here, with a different arm configuration. Or perhaps when they're coming in for side mount, perhaps you decide to do this, but uh, I'm gonna pretend we're already here, right? And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna swim this hand now, which was blocking the biceps, elbow was blocking the bicep. I'm gonna swim it between our bodies and use it to turn on my side away from the person. Now, am I giving up the back? Totally. I'm showing in my back. But whether I give up the back is up to kind of what I do next. So the idea here of turning away from somebody, uh, back control, bad for me. Turtle, not as bad for me. In fact, not as bad as side control, which is why some people, you know, bail in to go to turtle here. But I just want to talk about how to do it, right? So when we're here, if I swim this hand between us, so now I can't leave it behind, obviously. So I have to get this hand back in the mix. And now I can sort of clear, help clear here a little bit. Do not come to your knees. So if I come to my knees, you notice that, you know, you were looking at the top of his head. I swam in here. And when I go here, he's perpendicular to me. He's going to take my back. He's going to be on my back. Very easy to get on someone's back who's perpendicular to you in front of you. So instead of that, when I swim this in, I'm going to do this step up here with the far leg, far from your front leg. Right? So I don't, I'm not going to log roll here and be at my head here and just turn over. I'm going to bring my leg over here and walk. So my head is now facing my opponent. Their head's facing you. I've gone to a head-to-head -head position with them, and that's a way harder turtle to take the back from, okay? And that's the turtle we want to land in. If I'm here and I turn over, again, you know, if you're this person and you're next to me and you see me like this, like, you're just going to put the near hook in and take my back. Um, but take my back now, you know what I mean? You're going to have to spin around me. So I've bought myself the time I need to actually get to turtle, which is a positional, you know, depending on your uh, perspective, but I think pretty much everybody would agree. Being in the bottom of turtle is way better than being pinned on my back on the ground, okay? So that's why people run to turtle. It is not my recommendation. It's not the best place to be. It's a step uh, possibly in the wrong direction in terms of showing your back, but there is a way to do it, and that's what I wanted to cover here. So I swim this in, and I'm going to step first. First, not even step. I'm just putting my foot over here. And with my pinky toe on the ground, then I'm pulling myself head to head with the guy. Okay. So that's running to turtle. And, the, and you know, who might do this? Who might this be good for? Well, if you're naturally good, already good at uh, single leg takedowns and like coming up to turtle is a, is a, is a walk right into your sort of single leg game uh, or a peek out game, like basically if you have wrestling background, you know, those are people that like to do this. And, uh, you know, Gabe, uh, our student, Gabe D., you know, is like the dirty turtle, you know? He's turtling all the time, but, you know, we haven't beaten him out of it because he makes it work, because it's good, because he has a good single game from there, and he had a lot of wrestling experience, so uh, that's why. The other thing I just want to mention about this as the la very last note here is this. If I can swim this arm in and start to turn away, and I don't like how things are going, I can grab me back, okay? And that's, a, that's legit, man. I can turn away, come up to here, so Granby's setup position is going to be I'm on my knee and my shoulder but and my toes because I get a lot of spring action this way, and I can push my butt, boom, into the person, and you can actually push them back, like, feet. Push them back a few feet because this is this is a lot of pressure. What, what I'm able to generate with my whole spine and with my hips, boom, hit running into them is, is a pretty serious amount of pressure. So um, I would honestly uh, recommend this to people who like turtling is maybe to do this sometimes. Instead of turtling, go to the Gramby, put your butt up, and Gramby back in. And again, that doesn't have to be, you know, I did it sort of smooth and friendly, but when you do it, you know, you can come up to this Gramby position and boom, you know, it's you're mule kicking them with your butt, okay? And um, and then your feet sort of unfurl back around your guy, possibly trying what their uh, positioning's off. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. We talked about uh, some bases. We talked about a lot of stuff. Talks about basics that base mostly included the far armpit. My far arm being in the far armpit. Okay, the elbow skate, belly down. We did that darts, the head and arm choke attempt. We caught their wrists and reversed them. I call that like a whatever elbow trap reversal. And then we did the ratchet. Where does the ratchet put you? Dog fight. We did four things. And then just a couple things about running away, about facing away from the guy and running to turtle. That you don't want to do this. You want to do this. 
we go further and then obviously we go into the back. Okay, so I, I thank you for being with me, guys. Um, we will uh, see you again tomorrow night's the last night. We're going to be doing side control escapes and then we're going to go to uh, a different kind of workout that, that won't be just position based, it'll be scenario based. So we'll, we'll start from one position, move all the way into another, and, and uh, maybe even submission or uh, some submissions. So let's uh, see each other again tomorrow if you can. And then otherwise, uh, not. Friday, but Saturday morning is when we'll start the scenario once. Okay. I thank you guys so much for hanging in, sticking with, and 